it's seven o'clock on a Tuesday night, and where else would I be but here with you? <clears throat> DJ Stutz here with Little Hearts Academy USA and Imperfect Heroes Podcast. <clears throat> and I have to apologize ahead of time. I know, I'm sick again. <clears throat> and I'm not even teaching this here. <laughs> so uh, that theory goes out the window. My kids always said, you're sick because you're around all the kids. And it's like, no, I just get cold sometimes. So anyway, I apologize for any coughing or clearing of the throat that might be going on. <clears throat> um, before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that my um, group coaching is open right now until the 18th. We're going to close the doors at midnight on the 18th. We won't be opening them again until uh, November. And so if you want in on this set of group coaching with the Cicerone Society, all you've got to do is go to our website at www.littleheartsacademyusa.com and you will find us right there and you will be able to get more information and register. <coughs> um, I love this week's episode. It is so much fun and I call it the true crimes of imperfect heroes. So uh, it ends in a zero, it's episode 60. That means that my niece Bailey is back with me. And uh, it's funny that both of us are the oldest of seven kids. And uh, we're opposite in that my family had five boys and two girls and her family has five girls and two boys. And so there's a little difference there. Another difference you might notice is uh, She's a generation younger than I am. And so uh, our experiences had a lot to do with the timing of our youth and of growing up. And we just share some hair raising stories, some funny stories. And um, we talk about uh, that connection with family, the connection <clears throat> with siblings. And uh, it's a really fun episode. And so I hope you'll take the time to listen. And I'm telling you now that I would love to hear your stories. And so if you want to just post them on Facebook, you can just email them to me uh, at djstutz at littleheartsacademyusa.com. You can always get a hold of me on the podcast website. There's a contact me thing and you can get me there. So that's the um, imperfectheroespodcast.com if uh, you want to do that. But I would love to hear your stories. And who knows, maybe if your story is right, uh, we'll be highlighting you on a future episode. And so that would be a lot of fun is to get some of those stories and, and to share them. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, it looks like I'm an angel here, I think. <laughs> so... I'm still with my uh, son and his family. It'll be probably another two months, I think, that we'll be here. And then we'll just see what life brings us. Hopefully our house will be done. But so depending on who's home and uh, where they are, uh, I am in different areas of the house. And uh, I tried last week to go outside, but it was a little too noisy. And so that wasn't something that would really work. So. Um, anyway, let's talk about some of those hair raising stories. And I know that it's easy for parents to even over worry about, you know, your kids getting hurt or um, maybe your kids getting in an argument with a friend or things not being fair and stop worrying about that. <laughs> kids, kids will get hurt from time to time. Um, and, but that doesn't mean that we take away the joy and the thrill of climbing a tree or riding their skateboard or, you know, doing some of the other crazy things that we've done. I can tell you some, it's funny. And these um, stories are not in the podcast episode. So you're getting a bonus here, but I remember being very young and, um, I remember it being a mile away from my house to my school. I don't know if that's the truth. 
I could tell you it's Lebeau Elementary in Oakland, California, back in the 60s. And uh, so it was a very tumultuous time there. Um, and it was kind of a crazy atmosphere. My dad was uh, getting his doctorate at Berkeley and I started kindergarten. And so I walked to school because that's what every other kid did back then. And I remember telling my mom that, I'm a big girl, I don't need you to walk me. And my mom had, I had two younger brothers at that time, Spence and then Dawn was it just a baby and so I know that um, my mom for a while she would send me off I had two little friends down the street and we would walk to school and I think that the moms kind of took turns but uh, they would stay back like you know stealth <laughs> with their stroller and we're so engaged with each other and having fun we, I did, I never noticed that my mom would be a block behind us making sure that we were safe. But at some point, um, she felt confident that I knew where I was going, I knew the rules, and she quit watching me. And I started walking to school by myself in kindergarten. And uh, then I went on to first grade, same school, same house, and it was, uh, at the end of first grade that my dad finished his doctorate and graduated. So we were still at that school and um, there was a con <laughs> there was a convent <laughs> between my house and the school. And we figured out that if you shimmied through the gate that it was a shortcut and it was a lot faster to go through the grounds of the convent and sneak out on the other side. And I just have these memories of running from the nuns. <laughs> and they had the full black habit, you know, the full thing. And, you children should not be here, you know, and they'd chase after us. Well, they're in those long dresses and we were pretty fast and they never did catch us. <laughs> but, <coughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, <clears throat> but we would run. And I think the fact that the nuns chased us was the most fun of the whole thing. It was, it was a blast. And I'm sure we irritated them to no end. But um, being women of God, I think that they maybe understood the joy of a child. I don't know, we'll see. I'm always gonna impose that on them, whether it's true or not. <laughs> so, you know, there are things like that that came from being able to have time that was unsupervised. And it was a very dangerous time, actually, quite honestly, to be a little girl in Oakland, California in the 60s. And um, I, it's odd that I remember that I was um, in first grade when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Yes, I'm that old. So if you do the math, you can figure it out. <laughs> but um, I was out on the playground <clears throat> and I remember I was, you know those bars and you whirl around them. I keep wanting to see if I could still do that, but then I'm afraid that I'll make a fool of myself, but I might try that again sometime. Anyway, I was on the bars and the teachers came out and they were all very, very upset. And they were crying and they said, to come in, um, you're gonna get your coats and you're gonna go home. And they didn't have parents signing us out, but back then, almost all parents, um, or all kids had a mom at home. And if they didn't, there was a neighbor that would watch out for them. And so they just sent us home. And I thought, this is so weird, and why are the teachers crying? And and the principal came on and said, go directly home. Don't stop at a friend's house. Go straight home, um, and, uh, you know, we'll see you all tomorrow. Okay. You know, I'm seven, six. No, I'm six. And um, I walked home, and I remember coming in 
children used the back door. We were not allowed to use the front door back then, at least with my mom. And <clears throat> I came in the back door and there was a, a family room and it seemed like she was always folding laundry. That's just what I remember. And she um, had the laundry there and she's sitting there crying. I don't know where my brothers were, but I remember that really scared me that why are all the grown-ups crying? And that really confused me. And that was something that um, has stuck with me throughout my life. That's the big thing I remember is all the grown-ups were crying. And that scared me. So, <clears throat> you know, when we think about when we're growing up and what were the traumas that happened, you know, they were, they many times they are unintentional, unintentional. And many times they are the interpretation of a young child taking what they know and using that knowledge to interpret what's going on around them. And it can be completely and absolutely wrong with what's really going on, but that's all they have to work with. <clears throat> so that's something to maybe think about, you know, when a traumatic experience happens um, is maybe being upfront with your kids, but there's, there's that. Um, I remember <laughs> um, I was eight years old and we'd moved into a new house. And so now there's four kids. My sister's been born and this is in Los Angeles. My dad was just starting at UCLA and uh, had been, become an associate professor full time. And <coughs> sorry. And my mom's trying to get the whole house organized, you know, there's so much going on. And so us kids were underfoot. So she gave each of us, the three of us, a spoon and said, you know what? Because we all love playing war. That was a big deal back then, playing war. And that, a lot of the TV shows that were on were about war. It was like combat and the desert rats and uh, Hogan's heroes and... Uh, so much was around war and uh, Vietnam had started and so we were uh, going to go dig a foxhole for our play well mom had grossly <laughs> underestimated <laughs> our, our determination <clears throat> so we were out there for hours mom got a lot done the next day comes, it's in the summer that we moved in there and so there wasn't any school. And so uh, we had breakfast and we're like, we're gonna go dig. She's like, yeah, go dig. <laughs> and out we go and we're dig, dig, digging with our spoons. And uh, we found, uh, I don't know, this like rod. And we thought, well, that's weird. We'll just dig around it. And so we dug around it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We were about a foot underneath the, the rod. We're very proud of our um, foxhole. So we went to get our mom. <laughs> mom, come look. Come look at what we made. And she comes out and has a heart attack. <laughs> what that rod was was the gas line into the house. <laughs> we just dug around it. It was on the side of the house. And so she's like, oh, we have to cover this up. Don't tell your father. <laughs> I remember that very clearly, and um, I remember how sad we were <clears throat> at having to fill our hole that we had worked so hard on. But now, as an adult, it's just something that is absolutely hysterical to me. <laughs> and no one got blown up, and we're all fine. So just think about the silly and the crazy things that you did as you were growing up. And... Um, and what sweet memories that those are. And, you know, we laugh now, but we realize that if our mom knew, she'd have killed us with some of the things, some of the chances that we took and um, as we were out. But we became independent. We became strong. And, <clears throat> well, oh, I, another thing I was going to mention, too, is back in the kindergarten days. So there was... We live kind of in the middle of the block, and if you went down to the end of the block and then kitty corner, there was 
just a small grocery type store. I think similar to a bodega in um, New York, just had a lot of stuff. And my mom would send me down at five years old and I would have a list, I would have money, and then I would go and give it to the owner of the store. He knew me and he would get everything, give me the change, put it in the bag, tell me to be careful, and off I'd head back home. And so we got to learn about responsibility and independence and all of that. And I know that it's um, a hard balance to come up with, how do I give them enough independence so that as they grow up, they're not afraid of things, they're not afraid of taking risks. Taking risks as an adult is so important. And uh, that, that's what our entrepreneurs are. That's what, are the, that's what the people who find cures for disease or who find new technologies to help the military or the police department or, or maybe they find the technologies to help someone who's an amputee or um, <clears throat> trying to keep their home safer. But look at all the stuff that we have in our home now. The, you know, we have the cameras and the alarms and we put in a code and it knows the difference between our dog walking around in the house and an intruder. And so all of those people though were willing to take risks. They were willing to take social risks, professional risks, academic risks, and and sometimes when it was hard and unpopular, they had what it took to really stick with the dream and move forward with it. Isn't that an amazing thing? And when we don't allow our kids to take the risks that are so important, how are they going to learn that they're capable? How are they going to learn that, oh, that didn't work, okay, lesson learned, let's move on. They don't have to beat themselves up over, oh, I made a bad mistake, oh, that didn't work, oh, this is worthless, and then they give up. They only give something one or two tries. I mean, you look at people like, um, you know, Edison and how many times he failed and um, all the um, Tesla and yeah, they were enemies, Tesla and Edison, but they were both brilliant people who kept trying new things and and a failure wasn't a failure. It was just crossing up. Okay, well, that didn't work. We can cross that off, move on to the next one, right? And so we want our kids to be willing to reach out and to have the confidence. And some of that is part of those, you know, goofy things that we did growing up, the scary stories that would curl your mother's hair when she found out um, years later that you did such silly things. So I'd love to hear about your stories. I would love to hear your thoughts and your comments. You've always got the Facebook page where you can leave things. You can tag me on an IG post. And okay, hold on to your seats. Anyone who knows me is going to be shocked beyond measure. But I'm on TikTok. <laughs> I know, crazy, huh? Yeah, so I'm on TikTok and it's Little Hearts Academy USA. And so you can always... Uh, Look for me there. I've got three whole posts up and uh, just barely started. But um, yeah, I'd love your encouragement. So anyway, listen to the podcast. If you haven't yet, leave me messages. I'd love to hear your stories. I love people's stories. And I'll see you later. Until then, let's find joy in parenting. Good night, everyone.